here and I'm going to kind of leave it at that because I'm going to pick it up in a little bit. So yeah, I guess, well, I guess the end of the story is I ended up leaving my job in December. <laughs> kind of, <laughs> we had thought about it, but um, just through progressing through the year and just like coaching and things adding up, when we sat down and looked financially, we saw that things were growing each month, which is really huge. Cause even though at the time I remember there were some months that were hard and I was like, there's no way I'm going to be able to completely replace my income. It's going to take too long. And it took my husband and I sitting down, it was like November and really like looking at the numbers and putting it in a sheet and seeing how each month there were those slight increases that were happening. So we justified that if I stayed home, and had more time to focus, then I could get to where I wanted to be quicker. So, all right, now I feel like I'm totally jumping all over the place because it's so long when I share my story. Um, but I love this quote, um, the difference between a master and a beginner, the master has failed more times than the beginner has ever tried. I think this is huge because I know one of my biggest things last year, especially when I said I wanted to quit hundreds and hundreds of times is because I was always so focused on looking at that end goal, which is great to have. You need to have that why, but I was so focused on seeing that and seeing how far away I was that it would just make me feel like there's no way I could ever get there instead of shifting my mindset and thinking about all of those small steps that I was taking to get there. So I thought that was a good one. All right. So yeah, I guess how many times I almost quit. Like I said, a lot. <laughs> and like I mentioned before, um, there was always something that kept pulling me back. And I really truly believe that this um, has also brought me a lot closer to my faith journey. And God, I know um, I have a lot of women that are really, um, you know, open about their faith on social media and God, I know Brooke is, and a lot of women on her team. And that is another piece that I feel like I have been needing more of. And I had growing up and just with life kind of have been pulled away with it. And I've talked to a couple of girls on my team about this too. And I'm like, you know what? I just, it is crazy how this opportunity has not just brought me like my weight loss you know, this income opportunity, but it also has brought me the people that I feel like I have needed that need to speak to me in this way. And you don't have to be faith-based at all. This is just how it has happened for me. And I swear, like Judy Heller says in her book, the universe is on your side. Like he knows what is going on and people are in your life for a reason. And that was beach body for me too. It was just, it kept coming back when I felt like giving up. I would see like, I had a person sign up or just little things that kept pulling me towards it. Um, the hard months will come. People will say, no, some months might feel hard. So how do you keep going? As a newer coach, I just want to be upfront. It is so worth it. And you're going to look at your coach. Um, you're going to look at the diamond coaches. You're going to see these coaches on national wake up calls that are in the million dollar club or whatever they have going for them. I can tell you they have not gotten there without struggle. And when you sit down and you hear people's stories, it is not um, just one day you wake up and you land into a job where you make a bunch of money. It takes work and it is work that is worth it if you're willing to put it in and see how it can fit into your schedule. So when it gets hard, how do you keep going? And um, I just put my turning point for me. It was in October because that's when I... Um, really was like this close. I was at the lowest, 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 lowest point where I even asked Brooke, like, what do I do if I quit? Like what happens to all of my challengers? And she was kind of explaining to me like how it worked. And, um, I remember just like being in tears, but I was, um, working so hard at my job. I was not doing well there. It was just, it was a struggle. So I went into the school year saying, I'm going to give my career my all because they need it. Um, and I felt like the more I gave to my job, the less I got in return. It was like the more that was demanded, the more that was expected. I was not being fulfilled. And I felt like, obviously, like Beachbody had to go. Like my job was too demanding. In order for me to be the best social worker I could be, I had to give my all and then some, so there was no time left for Beachbody anymore. Like the cracks in my day, at that point I had thought like I had totally lost. 
and it was in October. This was all happening. Uh, I was really struggling with my marriage. It was just, it was trickling. You know, when you like have those moments where the world just feels like it's crashing, it just trickles into every area. Your parenting, your relationships, your social life, your maybe your fitness journey. And that's like where I was. And I'll never, ever, ever forget sitting in my basement and looking at my phone and I had earned the success club trip to Punta Cana. <laughs> and you guys, I had bawled because in my, uh, my mind, I had had a couple months where I didn't hit success club. I had some amazing months, but I had some where I struggled and I just thought in my mind, there's no way I could ever earn these things. Like it's just too hard and too much work. And I sat there and I looked at that email and that was like my sign. And I was like, you know what, if I'm going to do this, I need to go all in. I need to say yes. And one of them was going to, um, super weekend in November. I said, you know what, it's a four hour drive, but I need to figure it out. Like if this is what I want to do, like I need to give it my all to really see if this is where I need to go. So just know that too, like with the Punta Cana trip and doesn't, I mean, you don't have to earn that to keep going, but those are just like little things to keep track of how you're progressing um, over time. So that was like my big turning point for me and kind of like my decision to like, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to go. Okay. Wow. I see the chat going. I'm trying not to look at it because I'll start reading. So how to keep going. These are just some things that I had kind of come up with. I know it looks like a lot. Um, I have this new sandwich analogy and I guess it's not like super to be approved because that's the open face sandwich. Okay. I know we joked about that on my team when <laughs> I was so proud of myself for coming up with something. I'm like, I have this analogy when I look at the bat tracker, how it's set up um, on self-care and professional development. Um, staying in your own lane, tracking overall progress, which I've kind of mentioned a couple of times. Um, go where you're scared, lead with your team 100%. And I'll explain that as well. Utilizing your resources, invite and follow up. Biggest fear right here. And then having that solid why. Always keep that in mind and never give up. I put the picture here up here is my homeboy. This book, I swear to goodness, has changed me like so, so much. Um, if you guys are new and you're a new coach and you're looking for professional development, go here. This is where a lot of my ideas are from. And the things that I've been implementing that um, Judy Holler talks about seriously has been life-changing. So the first one, the little sandwich analogy I have, um, and kind of how to take some action. If you're feeling like you're stuck or you're just getting started, I want to give you guys some things to run away with. So always start and end with you. So if you look at the bat tracker, um, and that is the success club activity tracker for those that are newer, I know we have graphics of it and it's also in your coach office. The very first one is, um, you know, being product of the product. So focusing on you. And then the very last one is professional development. So I tell my girls and I firmly, firmly believe as a coach, you always need to start with you. You always need to end with you. Your health journey comes first. Your mental health comes first. Your well-being comes first. And if those pieces are not in line, the rest of this work is going to get very hard when you catch yourself struggling that's a time where you need to kind of pump the brakes, reflect, take care of yourself, dig into why you're feeling that way and dive into that. Because I can tell you every time that I thought about quitting, it's because I wasn't focusing on one of those things. It's because I was neglecting the professional development. It's because I was neglecting my health journey, or maybe I was working out, but my nutrition wasn't quite there. Or maybe I really wasn't focusing on my mental health and my mind wasn't in a good space and I was too busy comparing or too busy being jealous or something like that. So that's where you need to stop and it kind of goes into stay in your own lane. Like you need to really sit with that and figure out what's going on and game plan what you're going to do to really make yourself better and make yourself well. So yeah. Um, and then back to the 
Spears, my homeboy, my little shout out to that professional development book, which is actually why I chose to do the book club because I knew that was an area I needed to grow in. And that was huge. So if you need a place to start, that's a good book or just join our book club because that'll be super fun too. Um, the second one is stay in your own lane. So I touched on that a little bit. The comparison game will drag you down, guys. <laughs> it would drag me down day after day. And whatever you need to do, again, to put your blinders up and keep focusing on your journey, like, do that. Um, I also always find, for me, and even after reading this book, that when you start comparing and there's that jealousy or that feeling like, well, she has this and she has that, or, you know, they have this, like, it's usually a good indicator that there is something that you're missing or an internal battle that you might not even know about. And I can tell you, I've had that many times where I would catch myself doing that. And I didn't even realize like what the battle was about. And another example is um, recently, and I'm not saying like I'm implementing all these now and I have like a halo on my head and every day is great. Um, even with my pregnancy journey, there was a point where I caught myself um, really comparing to other people that were pregnant and how much weight they were gaining. Just like a really simple thing. And I, for some reason, that's just some kind of battle I've had to overcome. And for a while, I actually went on social media and I unfollowed a couple people because for me, I was like, I need to clear my head and I need to reflect on why I'm feeling this way instead of being triggered every moment and getting salty about it right away. So I did. I took the time and I unfollowed and I started just digging. And really, I think it's because I haven't processed a lot of my own body image stuff. And I'm in the process of really, really learning how to love my body, um, no matter what shape or size it is. So I'm actually at a place where like, I'm more okay with it. And I started following people again. And it doesn't have to happen overnight. You know, you maybe never follow them again, but I'm just telling you that these things that I'm sharing, I don't have down to a T. These are continuous things that we all deal with. And the best thing you can do is just become really self-aware of yourself and your overall health and where you're at so you can reflect and keep progressing. Um, I can't talk. Number three is tracking your overall progress. This has been huge I, for me too when things get hard is focusing on those little successes. So where were you last week? Where were you last month or last year? Like what are some of the ways you see yourself growing? You know, did you have somebody sign up last month? That's awesome. Like celebrate that. You need to celebrate these successes. Like did you send 10 invites today and maybe a week ago you would have never sent one. That is huge. You need to cheer yourself on and celebrate those changes so that you can keep building. And then eventually you can start seeing the ripple effect of your hard work and really looking at how you're growing um, to get to that big picture, whatever your why is or what you want this to be. The fourth one is go where you are scared. Uh, what part of this business scares you? I think we all have it. I have it, I still have it. I feel like all the time, that's where you need to go. And I've heard this from other coaches that if there's something that scares you or that you're avoiding or you're procrastinating on, like that's what you need to focus on. You need to, again, like figure out why. And it's okay to take bits and pieces of this business. I know it can look like there's a lot sometimes on what you need to do. So like if it's daily posting, if that's something you are terrified of doing, like focus in on that. That's okay to take some time to focus on that. Get solid in your daily posting. And then move on to the next thing. If it's running your own challenge group, if that is something that just terrifies you out of everything, you're good with posting, you're good with inviting, but you're terrified of running a challenge group, that's what you need to focus on, sister. Like that's the next place you gotta go. And you gotta figure out why, then you gotta just do it. And the more you do it, the more comfortable you're going to get with it, and the easier this business is going to start to feel. So, Lead your team 100%. This so is like my new thing because I have noticed whatever you are giving off to your team, your team is going to follow that and even sometimes do half of that. So if you are skimping out at all on your nutrition, your workouts, um, business stuff like inviting or following up, 
they're going to start doing that too. They're not going to see that as important. So if you're looking to really grow in this business and be diamond star diamond elite, you need to model that for your team. They need to see you showing up in those challenge groups. They need to see that you're inviting, you're inviting 20 people. They're going to be inviting five people. And that's just what I've learned from tons of other coaches as well. I feel like within this last month and a half, my girls shout out have been kicking butt. And I feel like it's because my biggest fear was inviting. And I made that my thing. I'm like, inviting is my baby this month. Like I am going to go hard with inviting 20 people a day. And I have seen them overcome their fears and invite and address no's like a boss. And I am so proud of them. And I really think that that just comes from and I don't want to just say like, oh, that's all me. But that's also from Brooke showing me this past year, like she's been consistent with her inviting throughout all of my ups and downs. So I, at the point in my business where I'm like, you know what, this is something that I need to do. This is something my girls need to do so we can all grow as a team. So I need to model that for them. So lead like the leader you want to be today as much as you can. And everyone else will start following. You'll get momentum and it'll be wild. Um, utilizing your resources. So this is a really good one. If you're looking to grow, um, just overcome your fear. There are so many resources that we have, you guys, coach, office, team page, challenge groups, teaming up with other people in our team. And, um, actually when I went diamond, it wasn't even my idea. It was Jess. And I think Jess is on here. Uh, I think it was after Brooke had posted something. We were really close to Diamond and Jess was like, hey, we should like be Diamond in December. And I was like, okay, sure, why not? And I truthfully believe, again, like for me, that was like God saying like, Brooke, you need this push because you're not going to do it by yourself. Um, and we partnered up and we just talked and we made it our goal. And I know like, I always feel bad because Jess is like, shout out girl, you made me cry on your call because you are still amazing to this day. I feel like we are continuously pushing each other and she's setting these big goals and always making me want to do more. So finding those people, they can be in this team. They don't have to be on your team, like find them somewhere and encourage each other and learn from each other and bounce ideas off of each other. Um, Google is like my best friend, Google everything, YouTube. I, when I'm in a good mindset and I want to learn something, I'll YouTube, you know, beach body coach that I love and watch some of her videos. A lot of them have um, personal vlogs and put team calls up and how to invite like good stuff. Um, professional development again, books, podcasts, following other coaches, getting on those national wake up calls and the champions page. Like we have so many resources and I feel like if you have a goal and you have a big goal, you don't need to wait for someone to tell you to run for that goal. We have stuff out there for you. You need to start digging and start looking into that and trying to figure out, you know, what you want this to look like for you. Um, inviting and following up. You guys will probably hear this all the time as long or as long also with the word consistency. These were huge for me though last month, as far as growing. Um, I'm currently diamond working really close to one star diamond and really, really close to two. So, because our team is just on fire, um, inviting and following up is huge. Um, for me, this is a struggle. Again, going back to, if you're struggling, find out why, find a strategy that works for you, that you feel comfortable with. And knowing that there is extreme power in the follow-up too. Because that's another thing before when I would invite, if someone would ghost me, I'd be terrified to message them again. I was like, oh, they read it. They think I'm trying to sell them something. Um, no, the follow-up is huge. And if not, I feel like more important than the invite because, um, Brooke, I want you to share your story too. Because the follow-up is just like huge. People miss it. Um, people get busy. We're all busy. I can't tell you how many times like I have missed a message in my phone and then I'm like, Oh crap, I meant to for reply. So knowing that, um, every ghost is not a no. 
And then if it is a no, asking a little bit more, like, you know, can you tell me what your thoughts are? Or um, it, I'm really bad at like speaking what I usually type because I have more time to type. But when I get a no lately, I've been asking like, can you just tell me a little bit more about that? It'll help me understand where you're coming from and also help me with how I can help people in the future. And I've been getting amazing feedback from that because sometimes it's um, somebody has tried Shakeology before and they didn't like it or they tried Beachbody and never had a group they could get plugged into or maybe, you know, you never know what's behind that no until you ask too. So those follow-ups, you guys are huge and can be life changing and just continuing to have those conversations. Then the last thing, your why. Maybe you're new or if you've been in this for a while, you need to have a solid why and a vision. And I know for me, like looking at that sometimes was kind of paralyzing when you feel like you're down here and you're just starting and you want to have a beach house. And it's like how that seems like a pretty big stretch to get from here to here, which is like totally my dream. Like <laughs> I want to be on the beach. Um, you need to have that why though to keep you going when things get tough and to remind you when someone says no like why am i doing this is my why stronger than someone potentially saying they don't want to sign up right now like is my why strong enough that it's okay if someone deletes me on facebook like i've had a lot of people and follow me too like that's totally cool but i've also had a lot of people since i've talked more about coaching want to know more about coaching so is it worth it? Um, having a strong why that is stronger than your excuses ultimately is going to keep you going too. And just always coming back to that and remembering that in the back of your mind. So those are my eight little steps I came up with. So how can you take action today? You need to get to know yourself really well. Really gauging your feelings, gauging your emotions, um, when this feels hard and it will get hard, being able to sit back and reflect is going to be huge um, so that you can keep going. And then what is your why? What do you want from coaching? Really digging into that. Um, and then what are you going to do to get there? Like, what are the steps you are going to take? You don't need to take all of the steps at once because then it's just going to feel so overwhelming and you're not going to know where to start. It's okay to take those little steps. Um, and then at the end, what's going well, celebrate that no matter how small it is or how big celebrate what's going well. And then if you need somewhere that you need to grow or that you're struggling with, then that's what you need to focus on. And then I just put my income progression. Cause I feel like this was really big for me this year too, because, um, I have been income driven. I left my job to really, um, uh, work on replacing my income. And there have been times where my weekly paychecks, I'm like, oh my gosh, I didn't make that much. When I sat down and made a spreadsheet and really started putting the numbers down from last year to this year and comparing, like obviously you can see. And I totally missed that getting in the day-to-day -day, day -day shuffle when, you know, there were some weeks that felt hard where nobody wanted to, you know, join or I felt like I was hardly going to make success club. So that big picture, and adding up those successes is going to be huge for you guys. The only difference between a dream and a goal is a deadline. This business takes work, you guys, and it is so worth it. You can go as fast as you want. You can go as slow as you want. Fast is fun, I'm learning. I feel like when you're in the right mindset to go fast and you're in a season where you feel like, okay, I can do this, like do it, take advantage of that. And I've learned that with pregnancy. And my first trimester when I was miserable and I started feeling better, I'm like, oh no, I'm taking advantage of feeling good right now because I know there's a baby coming. So I'm going to build as much as I can so that when things do get hard, my foundation's even stronger. <laughs> um, but really like at the end of the day, you don't have to keep up with the person next to you. If you're working full time, like it's going to be harder to go faster. So set deadlines, set goals, you know, do what feels good to you and know that any movement is good movement. Just don't, just don't give up. Don't give up. If you have a good why and this is what you want and you feel called to be here tonight and you want to know more, don't give up. It's my little ending. All right. So 
I rambled so much. I want to know from you guys if there's anything, any takeaways that you have, or if there's anything you would like to know more about. Do you want to unscare your screen, Brooke? Oh yeah. Oh goodness. Now my girls know too, when it comes to technology, this is painful for me. Oh. So you don't even have to be good at technology to be good at. <laughs> no, not at all. So exit? Um, yes. Exit. I think, so go down, that will exit your presentation. If you go down to the bottom, it should pop oh. up like the Zoom stuff and it will say like stop sharing screen or something. Oh, there it is. There we are. See? This is like brutally painful. Oh, stop share. I got it. Everybody. Okay. So Brooke asked a takeaway. What do you guys, what do you guys take oh. I know, Brittany, I was heartbroken. Okay, too. Just laid gold down, so I know you guys have stuff. What uh, the question was, what is like one takeaway you're taking away tonight? Because it's something. Yeah, because you can't just listen. It's pointless to listen to a training or come to this and like not do anything. Like you have to do something. I really loved your sandwich analogy. I thought that was really good. <laughs> Especially I feel like when I first became a coach, I think I thought I needed to prioritize the inviting and the follow up and like my whole focus was there and it would get very overwhelming. Mm -hmm. um, and then when I realized like, oh, personal development is what's going to keep me going on those hard days and enjoying the fitness journey and health journey, that's helped so much. Um, and now that I'm like in a good routine, sometimes I push that off again. So that was just a good reminder to prioritize mm -hmm. you first, end the day with you, like invest in yourself and then make the business happen too. But I like that. Oh, I'm glad. I think for me, um, I, I put this in the chat, but I'm a teacher also, and I teach state tested. Um, and I have, I've always had like the lower end of the kids. And so for mm -hmm. us, we've always said growth is growth. Growth is growth. And so it's like, if a kid is failing, but he grows five points to the next level, to the level right below passing, that's still to be celebrated. And so, you know, for me, I'm, baby I'm a baby coach but like right. I have a, a challenge group going and I think it that it's for them it's important to see that I celebrate the small victories and I'm excited about their small growth hey you started hey you did day one and like you know just to let them know that just because they're not at their max they're not where they want to be yet that that's okay they're still better than they were yesterday so what you said about, about growing in little small increments and stop looking at the end, end, end goal and deciding that you failed if you're not there yet is yeah. super important. Yes, I love the teacher growth mindset. You know all about it. <laughs> it's in the school setting. And it's, <laughs> yes, you do. And it's the same thing for us too. Like when we're adults and in any form, whether it's like, working towards our goals or challengers working towards goals and celebrating all of those victories because yeah. all of that adds up to the big outcome whatever it is that we are all shooting for <laughs> if you think you've reached the top and can learn no more you're wrong <laughs> mm -hmm. you gotta keep learning yes i love it thank you and then if there's anything anyone else wants to know more about, now I'm trying to look at the chat too. I'll peek through here. I love Kaylee. She said, invite, 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 even though it scares the crap out of me. Girl, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's so funny because it like would paralyze me. And there's even sometimes, and I have a small group chat going on just with a couple of my girls that really have voice that they want to lead. And, um, you know, run with this and do more of the business side and not just as a discount. And, um, I try to tell them every time I'm scared, 
<laughs> like, I'll be like, I'm sending an invite. I'm on number six and I'm paralyzed. <laughs> and because sometimes it just comes over you. And I think that's why that fear is my homeboy is so great because she teaches you to like recognize that fear, welcome it and figure out how to keep going. And mm -hmm. honestly, I put on some good music and I'm like, okay, I'm doing this for my family. Send, worst I can say is no. And then I'm like, okay, I can get back into this group again, so. I do have one question. I have some people who have reached out and said that they are, you know, interested, send me information and you send them information, crickets, and then you <laughs> follow up crickets like do you just give up after the first follow-up do I say something again that's a good question um I am definitely still growing in the follow-up area too I have heard from other coaches and I'm starting to implement no isn't no until it's like a hard no <laughs> S-T-O-P in all caps <laughs> <laughs> like a no leave me alone or a delete <laughs> and I'm like oh I kind of like that <laughs> okay. um, especially if they're asking for information I know when I first started I used to send and this is just me personally like send like a lot of information where I went back and I feel like my brain moves so fast I need like short and quick um, so I really brought mine down to just like a couple sentences on what I do and then a couple more sentences to try to keep that in, um, conversation flowing. Um, but if they're asking for information, like there's something going on, there's wheels spinning. So I don't write them off completely. And the amount of times I follow up, I think it just kind of depends. I try to go back through with like new months and new challenge groups for sure and say, is this a better month for you? Cause that's totally what Brooke did with me for months is <laughs> just say like, is this better timing? And until it eventually was like perfect timing and it was something that I needed. So I say it's not a no until it's like a, absolutely not. Oh, never die. <laughs> and even then it's like, why are you so hesitant? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, Katie, I would say with that one, like, I mean, if you followed up two or three times and they sub ghosted you, like, just come back the next month and be like, just what Brooke said, hey, I know last month was not good timing, but I know you are wanting to do, you know, X, Y, Z. That's why it's always so important when you first start a conversation to get their goals. So then you can always come back to them and be like, you were wanting to do this. And then like, if they're still ignoring you, but they're still watching your stories every day, liking your posts, it's like, okay. I'm going to follow up with them again and again and again. Okay. Well, it's perfect time. And shout out to you for running a challenge group as a baby coach. That's amazing. Just I only have six girls, but six is better than zero. <laughs> exactly. That's good. I'm <laughs> I think I had three, maybe three. I think it was three of us. That's awesome. Okay. <sighs> I know we're getting a little later on time. So if there's any other burning questions for Brooke. Um, I see like, how do you keep track of DMs? Yeah, me too. <laughs> um, I started an Excel sheet that I do my best to keep up with every day. Um, Otherwise, there may be some wonderful, wonderful people that are much more organized. I will not say that's my strength or lie and say it is. <laughs> I just, but that's one thing that I have been trying to do just for me to mentally keep track of my invites. I know there's some other people that have some awesome systems. I think you just have to trial and error until you find something that sticks. Like I've done the Google Docs form, I've done Excel spreadsheets, I've done like streak or whatever, and I am just a pen and paper girl. And like, mm -hmm. so that's I just have a, I just have like a Target notebook that I do every day. And if Google Sheets works better for you, or like you just have to, yeah, figure it out. Brittany's got some pen and paper. I see it. <laughs> Love it. All right, Brooke, before we go, 
you have to tell us what your big sweaty 2020 oh. <laughs> dude i want to be elite i really do like that's premiere was my goal and i'm like i told my girls i'm like we're we are an elite team i have some bomb girls on our team i love it so much and i know there's more to come I know the more that we keep sharing and the more that we keep growing and with all the girls that keep joining, like, I just feel it like this, like, we're gonna do that. And I want to be on a national wake up call one day and just like plan for it really well and maybe take a speech class to prepare for it. <laughs> I was much better at typing than speech. Well, you breathe yeah. life into the both of those goals just now, so... Repeat after me. I'm a badass beach body. Elite. Oh, you said ass. <laughs> badass beach body coach. So yeah, I know. You repeat it and you say it every day and you every are, day. you'll act like one and you'll be one. So thank you so much, Brooke. That was so awesome. And I will post this recording tomorrow or tonight, whenever I get a chance to share with all our coaches. Um, so thanks everyone for coming on. So yes, thank night. you. See you guys.